can only tape in one hour long seconds. I haven't figured out how to change that yet. exam is not all-encompassing. If I wanted to make it all-encompassing, it would have been several volumes worth of practice final exam. <laughs> <laughs> we do a different problem. Okay, I do have a question. I like that problem. How many questions is your final? And final? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think I've said before yeah. when I think about math teachers, you give multiple choice questions. Uh, not tests. Math teacher. Thank you. <laughs> so if you ever need a Scantron for a math class, I just want you to realize you're not in math class. You're in something else. So that short answer is hell no. Uh, and the other question, how long is it going to be? No, how many questions? Okay, how long is it going to be? Um, no, not time-wise. Come on. All right. Um, it can't be as long as a normal test, obviously, because how much time do we have for a final? Two hours. Yeah. So it's going to be a roughly four hours. <laughs> no, that's that mean, more oh, yeah, no, 25% yeah. worth each one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, normally, it's from like 20 to 25 yeah. questions long. And I'm counting like A, B, C, D. Because I hate it when a teacher says, you have four questions, and it ends up being A through K, each one. And we're going to be going through all the tests all over again. Yes, an excellent idea. Thing. To go through all the practice tests and the tests, Kind of make sure you can do all those kind of things. And then just make sure that all those ideas were represented in the practice final. Yeah. It should be fine. Yeah. Do you think the finals are curved? <laughs> 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 Only time I've been asked that question. Like, I forget about the answer. Maybe, maybe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do the path back in the morning? Every time you have a question, you have to 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 do they help study? Or? Again, the yeah, Especially because all the answers are in the back. There was a single one, I think, if I remember correctly. I think all the answers for the chapter uh, reviews and stuff. Yeah, so the review and the test at the end of a chapter, you have all the answers for every problem. So not a bad place to go review. Can you do a 16 on 17? Where? You're doing a work problem. No, 18. 18. 18. What do you mean? One last question. Um, yeah, so, uh, what's the last question? What are we talking about? Uh, are you going to be available at 18? Yeah, the practice final. What? <laughs> Number 18. I don't think there is an 18, is there? Professor? There is. After your office hours, you are a student to email me. Oh, once I'm out of here, it's out of my head. Trust me. 
Um, once I get my office, I've talked to so many people on the way there. I can't remember anything else. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Hold on. So what kind of problem are we looking at? Oh, just polar or parametric. Like what? Which one? So 18 is polar and parametric, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Right. So I just got tired at the end of it, I think. I just got tired of making a problem, so I could ask you to graph. give you the polar paper that I've been using for a while. Uh, use with okay. for parametric. I don't know how you guys feel about this. Hopefully now you're not too bad at polar paper. Yes or no? Maybe. For some reason parametric seems to be giving everybody trouble. Say it. Parametric means that there is a parameter behind the variables. Now what's a parameter? The parameter in this case would be T. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, only problem, the only problem, the problem that I have with parametric is when you put in the root 3, and that kind of threw me off completely because I was trying to put it into the calculator. In the last test, you put in like a value for uh, like T root 3 or something. You know what I mean? That yeah. threw, threw me completely off. Okay. Nobody, nobody is just using the t-value to dictate what x and y are, right? Yeah, but I didn't think of that. I just thought, well, I'll put in a number part of the calculator. I'll put out a number of the calculator. How about this? 25. Don't we have a t is between this value and this value? Yeah, you could. Well, aren't you supposed to do that? Isn't that a part? I wanted to get your feelings about this so far. So it's a little worse than what you tell me is a fifth root. 36. <laughs> so let's say t can be anywhere from um, uh, negative 6 to negative 1. Okay. How are we doing so far? I like it. 32. I have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> so you want to make your table. In this case, with it being a fifth root, I'm just going to give up on trying to put good stuff in there because the only good thing I could put in there is one. Negative one, really. Negative one. So I'm just going to get decimal answers. Just going to put it in my calculator, right? So I start at negative six. Y is going to be the natural log of negative six. Or any positive, sorry. Take the absolute value. So whatever that comes out to be is a decimal. X is going to be four minus a fifth root of six. But you get whatever the hell it is, approximate it to one decimal place. We can't really graph much better than that, so we might as well just go to one decimal place. So what do you guys get for natural log of six to one decimal place? It's going to be two point something. What is it? One point seven nine. Wow, almost two. It's one point eight. And what's 4 minus 3 to 6? Right, 5th root is 1 5th power. That makes sense. In the TI, you just go math, math 5, and then it's right there. I know, there's an X root button in there. Yeah. It's not bad to remember that roots are fractional powers. It's yeah, you notice I was very careful to put an absolute value in there. And I also did not include zero. Natural log of zero, I can't, the absolute value won't save me there. It doesn't exist. In general, I can't do natural log of negative numbers, but the absolute value is there. 
Sixteen, I understand. Sixteen is a good question. One sixteen, I tell you. And this is what's called a recursive formulation of a, a sequence. This is recursive. This doesn't mean to write in cursive again. <laughs> it means it's built on previous previous sequence elements. So I have to tell you where it starts. So A1 in this case was 3. So then A2 would be 3A1. See how the next one is based on the one before. 3A1 says 3 times 3. So then A3 would be 3A2 minus 4. Semester based just on this. 
And on one level, it's just playing with numbers in a way, right? Start with one and one, add two to get two, add these two to get three, add these two to get five. But the ratio between any two successive ones eventually becomes the same number. And it's called the golden ratio. Let's give that symbol five. And it's been proven through psychological tests that if I create something that uses that ratio, like, um, is it, what's a normal, like, no, uh, flash card size? Three by five. Three by five. Three by five. Or five by eight by five, right? Eight five by eight. So if I use things that are in this ratio that is more aesthetically pleasing to a human, it's the weirdest thing. If I use notes that are in this ratio, the most pleasing melodies, the most pleasing harmonies, <coughs> you can tell I don't play any kind of music. But if I play two notes at once, <laughs> in this sequence, they have that ratio, then it'll be pleasing to our ear. If they're not in the sequence, I might use them to wake up in the morning. <coughs> Those would not be in this ratio. That's insane. Anyway, so I did spend a lot of time talking about it. Not today, obviously. <laughs> I don't think I have much voice left. <laughs> what, what was the sequence of this cover? Well, uh, what else did this happen? In the 1100s or something, it was, it was um, <laughs> Fibonacci. It was actually not his name. He was from, oh, I can't remember the story now. Okay. Fibonacci was not his name. It was like he was the son of Fibonacci. So it was, uh, why would he choose a stage one? And was it discovered as, as the effect behind it? Was it discovered when it was first discovered, or was it ever expanded upon? Like when he when figured oh. this out, he was like, oh, well, this is Well, he good. figured it out by a thought process of putting rabbits in a room <laughs> and letting them. Multiply as rabbits would. And he was thinking about how many total rabbits would be in the room after so much time. How did one rabbit turn into two by itself? Well, obviously, you start with two. You actually <laughs> kept the babies. You kept the babies. Okay. You yeah. one right. So I didn't say this is exactly the situation, I said it's based on the situation. So, all right. Um, oh, what was the other question? Number? 17. 17, I think, is written like this, right? But it's plus, right? Like that, right? Yeah. I think it's just that. Now, this is the hardest part about sequences is figuring out how to write the general term for a sequence. I don't see any real good pattern going on here. I see a little bit of one for every other one. Two thirds, two fifths. This one's got to probably be two, two. over eight, seven, seven, if that pattern continues. Yeah. But it doesn't really jive with these guys. Yeah. But I notice that this is two over something, two over something. So if I make this two over something, one would become two over two. Yeah, and this is two over four. And this will be two over six. Now I see the pattern. The top is always two. We're going to worry about the negatives here in a second. The bottom is always what related to n? This is A1, this is A2, A3. So what's the house bottom related to N? Plus one. N equals one to what? Now, how do I take care of the negative? Negative one to the N. Because when N is two, negative one squared is positive. When it's odd, it's negative. When it's even, it's positive. This would be what's called an alternating sequence. 
Not a very creative name, but it's good. It gets to the point. So there you go. That's how you write this sequence in summation notation. And this is the part that you can't quite understand yet. There are certain things that it's better to have it written like this for. The mathematics is easier here. Especially this sucker went on forever. So if any of you have to go to Calc 2, an entire chapter in Calc 2 is related to this. Just to let you know. And it's fun. I love Calc 2. 280? 280, yeah. 280. No, Jesus. <laughs> well, what, what was like the math course called that you felt like the last one? Your highest math? Well, Del Rio, it, it was, was just called math. Complex, complex variable analysis or something like that. It was awesome. The best math course I ever took was probably, uh, it was actually not a math course, it was Physics 621, but it was Mathematical Methods for Use in Physics. It's where you learn the concept and you learn how to apply it physically, in real what situation would it apply to you. Yeah, that was awesome. Anyway. Can you do AP? Finish this one first. <laughs> 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 That's a good idea. <laughs> Don't count your chickens. <laughs> What's that? Die. Oh, 8B, how does it start? I think it starts off like... It's kind of in my way. Because I know what the difference of two logs are, but I have no idea what the difference of twice a log and another log. So where does this go? So now the difference of two logs, you can rewrite it as the Remember, logarithms are what? Exponents. When you subtract exponents, where did that come from? What operation? When you subtract, when you divide. So the difference of two logs is a log of the quotient. The sum of two logs is the log of the product. The last thing you can do is clean up the inside a little bit. Yeah, you can factor the bottom and kill an x minus 1. And that explains where this stuff came from on my answer key. So it's really important to know how to simplify logs, because now I've got one single logarithm. I could work with that a lot easier. And I could with several logarithms spread all over the place. <laughs> Some calculus problems, you want to go the other way. You want to break this thing up, and then it makes it easier to apply the calculus stuff you'll be learning to each piece instead of doing it as one giant thing. Trust me. So you got to know your properties of logarithms. They're the same as properties of powers, because logs are powers. it earlier, but like number 13, I still won't give you a conic section that's been shifted 
That one was shifted, but I hope you see how it's not that big of a step away from non-shifted. You just count from the new center. Don't count from zero, zero, count from the new center. Not that big of a deal, really, but I'm still not going to do it to you because it wasn't in our curriculum. So we're having a, a like, uh, dumb algebra 2 problem, like, like, say we can't divide by this number, like PEMDAS or something like that. Can we come up to you to help us out on that? You know, you know, you know what I mean? Like, like it's a big problem, but we can have trouble because I always like mess up like a root here, a root there, and that completely changes up the rest of the problem for me. Yeah, anything you can come up and ask. Anything like that? I'll harass you for a while and you know, <laughs> push you in the right direction. Functions really easy here. Um, how do those two functions relate? I know, don't worry. Look up here. How do they relate? They're not the same. They're actually exactly not the same. They are inverses. Inverses of each oh other. Oh my god, I got it right. Holy crap. <laughs> right? That's how we first learned this. We took the graph of this and we plotted its inverse before we even knew what the hell it was. Before we even knew what it was, we plotted the graph of it because we just switched the x and y. Then we had to give it a name. So we said, I don't know. <laughs> we'll call it log. So that problem, I think, says, um, uh, now I can't remember what it says. No, it says 7, like this. Yeah, 2 log 7. So if I had 5 to the log base 5 of y, and these two are inverse functions of each other, yes, the answer will be y. What's wrong here? Same problem we had over there. Stupid twos in my way. How could they kill each other? Twos in my side, and stupid two up there. These two. So the answer is x squared. Same thing happens if I add natural log of e to the x. That was on a test one I know. I paid that test. <laughs> <laughs> Right, again. <laughs> Inside life, Chris Farley would interview people from and he said, Do you remember that time in the movie when he blew up this building? So what happens here? What's the base on the natural law I've understood to be? Ten. Yeah. yeah, plan B. So the natural log at E, what are they gonna do? understood to be log base C. It's just a special log with them because it's useful in other applications. So they gave it its own special symbol. everybody else out too. So you get r squared or sine theta. So what's r uh, Whatever was polar. Uh, chapter 8, I think. 8. r squared is Sine theta. Why? What's R squared? Cosine squared. Uh, X, 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 X,
No, the whole thing. R cosine theta is x. So R squared cosine squared is x squared. Take it. 4x squared. So you can tell right now what shape it is. Or you should be able to. So it's, a, no, it's, an it's an ellipse. It's an ellipse. It's a plus. So it's not hyperbola. <coughs> but it's also it's not symmetric in the xy direction because they're not the same oh. coefficients. An ellipse is a circle where the coefficients are different for the x and the y. So it's differently shaped in one direction or the other. Yeah, so to find out where the center is, I've got to complete the square. So that would be adding a 4, right? 4 is 2 squared is 4. So now I know the center is where? Shifted back to right or down two in this case, so zero, negative two. That's my center, and it's not quite in the right format yet for uh, ellipse. What's the last thing you have to do? Divide by four. Divide by whatever this is. So I get x squared over one. Okay, shit. No c shit. So which direction is going to be longer in the x direction or the y direction? <laughs> Go for option two. <laughs> so a equals one, b equals two, whatever you like to call them. So my center is going to be at zero, negative two. And then from there, I'm going to count how far left and right. One. one. Center, I shift a little over this one. And from there, I'm going to count from the center, I'm going to count how far up and down. So it's going to be two. There's my little football. Oh, God. <laughs> I think the Chargers finally used one that was normal shape. <laughs> <laughs> What's the foci going to be? actually be three away from the center. So the foci will be at zero, negative two plus or minus root three. Up root three, down root three from here. Root three is about 1.7 or something. So it'll be about right there, right there. Okay. So yours will be a little easier than that. Yours won't be shifted from the center. It will still be at zero, zero. So it won't be this hard. This uh, hyperbola changes negative. Yeah, make this a minus. Or make this a minus. Yeah. So it's always a squared b squared. Okay. Where all that matters is you square root these to see how far to move in the x and the y direction. Okay. So more important than a and b is the idea. That's with the x, so it must be how much you move left to the right. That's with the y. <laughs> so it must be how much you move up and down. Can I stop talking yet? So, you guys, uh, Oh, nine, give me a break. <laughs> nine at this point. I don't want to be mean to you, Alex, but I, I will. Out. Good. <laughs> um, you all have my office hours. So hopefully, I'm not going to say another word after this class today. So I'm hoping my voice comes back. You want to take Oh, yeah, I know. I should know sign language. It would be great. All right. Drink a beer.
beer makes everything better. Um, actually, hot toddies. Whiskey and So, let me get this straight. Whiskey and beer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cough medicine. Never before liquor, never thicker. Than yeah, exactly. These players are not these players. Oh, this is from a while back. This is before I updated them. Okay. Oh, this is from the other day. That was either. Are we talking about either taking the other day or the day before? Or the day before? Or the day before? Or the day before? This Thursday, I'm giving a final at 7 15 in the morning. I don't know if you have that AA class. You can take it through the end. If I show it, I don't show it. I don't show it. I want you to let me know ahead of time. I'll actually have a test there. You know what I'm saying? So email me with your decision. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, did you have to do it? I wanted to see it. I'll upload it today. Alright. Yeah. Because I wasn't going to do it. I wanted 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 to do it.